Hi, I'm Steve Adams from Racing Index. In this video, I'll be taking a look at Gigi's Gold, a collection of reports and tools developed by Matt Bazzogno to help you analyse horse racing form as quickly as possible. In the layback and get rich betting Oscars, Gigi's has been voted the best horse racing betting product for the past two years. To do justice to everything Gigi's has to offer, this video would have to be several hours long, but my aim is to whet your appetite with a brief overview of the race cards, reports and tools that form the backbone of the gold service. If you want to give it a try for yourself, you can sign up for a one month trial for just one pound. I'll leave a link to the site in the description below. Okay, I'll jump over to the computer and let's take a look behind the scenes at Gigi's Gold. I'll start by taking a look at the race cards. Now you can see by the results over here on the right that most of today's races are finished. So I'm going to take a look at tomorrow, so I'll select Saturday 23rd. And you can view the cards either by meeting, or you can view them by time, or you can select the compact view and see all the race meetings there together. Okay, so I'm going to look at the 150 at Ascot. So at first view, it looks quite complex with all these all these different boxes along here. But I'll come to those in a second. But first of all, you've got your normal form figures. You've got the horse's name, age, weight, trainer, jockey, official rating. And then these bits aren't filled in yet, but they'll be there later. That's the racing post ratings, the top speed, and Peter May's speed ratings. And then you've got odds, which I think they're probably from Boyle Sports. Then you see these little icon boxes we have down here. So this is the horse's recent form. So if you click on that one, you'll see there it pulls up the, the recent form for the horse. Close that one. And then you've got the jockey form. So it shows how they're performing on over 14 day, 30 day, a year. How many runs they've had, wins, win percentage, place percentage. So that's all useful information at a glance there. Likewise for the trainer form. And then you get head-to-head -head form as well. Now this one hasn't got any. But you'll see that you've got the boxes for each individual horse, but you've also got them at the top here. So you can actually just click on head-to-head -head there. And it pulls up any head-to-head -head form there is between any of the horses. So you can see Botox has. And he's raced against Lightly Squeezed, Arriva Dirty, Nordano. You can see he's lost to those two, he's beaten those two. Lightly Squeeze has beaten both Arriva Dirty and Botox has. That's the head to head, we'll clear that one. And then you'll see here angles and query tool angles, I'll come to those a little bit later. Then you have room for comments, breeding sales data, any ratings you want to put in, bet tracker, and that's quite an interesting one. Say in this one I wanted to back Lightly Squeeze. I could put a bet tracker in there there. It's current odds are 11 to 2. But maybe I've got better odds from somewhere else. I checked it up maybe on Odds Checker. And I managed to get 6 to 1 with one of the other bookmakers. I've got best odds. Well I won't have best odds guaranteed at the moment because it's the day before. And if I want to back it each way. Well, we've got 12 runners and it's a handicap so... We've got three places at a quarter odds. So then I can save that. So that will actually then be tracked for me. And then when, when the race has been run, GG's will automatically apply the result to the race. And then that will be available for me later in the bet tracker, which I'll show you when I come on to the, to the tools options. So also you'll see they've got these little arrows here. With a little arrow going upwards with a 1. That means it's gone up in class by one one class point. You see a few of them have gone up in class by one. You see down at the bottom here it's gone up four steps in class. So other information you'll find on here as well is like the equipment the horse is wearing and whether they, um, how many times they've run since having a wind dot. So if I scroll down to the bottom, again it's not here yet, but the summary from the Racing Post will get pulled in there. And the speed rating, one, two, three, is from Peter May's speed ratings. Go back to the top. So then we have the full form. So you can see the full form for the 
each individual horse. And you can concertina up any of these sections if you're not interested in seeing them. So you can open and shut that. You can do that for any of these, any bits of information you want to see. And then from the drop down box, you can select the horse you're interested in. So let's have a look at Lightly Squeeze as we put the bet on that one. I won't go through all of this information, but I'll just leave it there on the screen so you can so you can see the information that you get on there. Okay, if we're going to look at the profiler, this shows the profitability figures for a number of categories such as the going, the distance, the class, for the course, and you can select that for the horse, the jockey, the trainer, or the sire. Okay, instant expert. This is a snapshot view of the horse's form for going, class, course, distance, and size of field. And each section is graded. Green is for good, amber is okay, red not so good. And then over on the right hand side we have today's official rating compared with the last winning run official rating and then the difference between the two ratings. We look at pace. Pace is broken down into four sections, either those horses that led, were up prominent at the front of the field, mid division and those that are held up at the back of the field. And you see here that it gives you a graphical representation of how the horse is likely to be run, whether it's going to be up the front or further back. So that's shown it over the last four four runs. And if we click on data here, you'll see each of the last four runs from its last run, its second to last run, third to last, fourth to last, where it was ridden in the race. So a four would indicate it's led. A three would indicate it's prominent. A two, only two. There's a two with mid division, and a one is if the horse was held up. And these are generated from the comments in running. So the total here is the total of the last four races, four threes, to twelve. The higher the total there, the more prominent the horse has been running. So obviously for four races, 16 would be the highest it would be able to get and four would be the lowest it would get if it was held out at the back all the time. And the final bit there is the odds. They only actually have the odds for Skybet and Boyle Sports. So you probably want to use something like Odds Checker so you make sure you get your bets on at the, or the best bookmaker's value. Let's next take a look at the reports. You see that when you've actually selected the reports tab, that the menu across the top changes so you can see all the different reports. So the first one, the A to Z, that's a complete list of the day's runners. So I actually want tomorrow's. So we haven't got odds for all of them yet. So you can sort by time, course, horse's name if you're looking for a particular horse, a trainer, a jockey if you're following a particular trainer or jockey, or you can select by the odds. Then you've got the class move report, and that shows horses that are going up or down in class. So if you're interested in those that are going down in class, or if you're interested in those that are going up, then you click on that one and it will, it will reverse sort the list. And that's up or down in class from its previous run. Okay, we're going to go on to the short list. Select tomorrow's. The scores here are based on the instant expert ratings. So with the green, it's worth three points. Amber is worth one point. Red is minus one point. I think if I scroll down here, yeah, it'll actually tell you the points. And grey is zero points, so it's neutral. You're looking for horses with the highest score possible. But with tomorrow's races, there's quite a few that from the same races that score highly. Like at the 335 race, we've got two here. There's quite a difference between the different odds. If we click on the 335, if you select instant expert, that's the information that we're looking at. And you'll see there's quite a lot of green. So really when you're looking at these, you're looking for ones where there's a lot of green for one horse and not so much green for the others. But with this being a better quality race, you'll see that there's quite a lot of green throughout really. So all, with, as with all of these reports, really it's just a, a starting point for your analysis. You shouldn't really be going on to the 
Let me just slip that back again. You shouldn't be backing these 15 score ones blindly. You should be looking for that just as an opening gambit to look. If we look at this Haydock 350 race, you'll see there that that's the only one that scores a higher one. So we click on Instant Expert there. There's splatterings of green on some of the other horses, but it's a starting point, and then you'd use other aspects of the race card to narrow down and see whether it's a selection you want to be backing or not. Okay, next one is Hot Form. Again, I'll select tomorrow. So you can specify the number of days you want to look back on, whether it be 30, 45, 60, or 90. I'm actually going to go select 45 here. And you can select the number of, minimum number of runs that horses from that hot race have run. If there's only been one horse running su subsequent to the race and it won its race, it's going to get a a 100%. And that might be quite a false reading. So I've got it set at 5. And you can sort it via win percentage or the place percentage. So King of the South came second in the hot race. And there's been six runs from the horses that were in that race subsequent to that race. And from those two, from those six runs, two of the horses have won and five out of the six have been placed. So that's pretty good place. Let's click on the hot race. And then you can actually select result. And that will then show you a list of the results for the horses on their subsequent runs. So the top two haven't run again yet. But the third place horse has actually won its subsequent race and then has come second again since then. The fourth place horse has come second and third. The fifth place horse has come second. The sixth place horse has come first. And if we scroll down to the bottom, the only one that's not done so well actually finished ninth in the race, was so was pretty much out of it in that race anyway. But all the ones that have finished further up and you can see there was the distance how far they were behind the leader so there was a head there one and a half lengths a short head a half a length so they're all quite well up with the with the leader and so we're actually looking at the the second place one who's actually running in this race and if you look at the fourth place horse average what I did notice if I go back to the hot horse form He's actually running today, so Arridge is running in the 340 at Lingfield. And he went off the 11 to 8 on favourite and only managed to finish third. So that kind of puts a little bit of a dent into the into the hot form. So it's another place, so it's now seven runs and six places from the seven runs. So you might think, well, okay, from that, maybe I should be back in King of the South for a place tomorrow. Once we've decided on that, we can then click on tomorrow's race card. And then you can analyse the race again using the rest of the race card information. We can have a look at the instant expert for that one. So that would he would be scoring a ten there. So three, 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 zero, and one. So again, a scored ten. So he'd actually be doing quite well on the instant expert as well. Go back to my reports. Next one's horses for courses. These shows horses that have run well at a particular course. Probably flip through the rest of these fairly quickly now because I'm a bit conscious of time getting on on the video. Head to head highlights horses that have previously raced against horses in the same race today. Again, you can specify your minimum number of runs. So that'd be the minimum number of times that they've actually raced against other horses in the race. Best of, so that's best of instant expert. So that's the taking the instant expert bits and pretty much showing them all on one page for all the races. So I don't really need to go into too much on that because I've already shown you the instant expert. Trainer stats. So you can look at trainers, individual 14 day form, 30 day form, one year, one year on the actual today's course and five years at today's course. And you can select it for all races or handicaps. Now there's a number of settings here and depending on what you set these up as to what, what you get in your list. So you can specify all those yourself and you'll see these last three bits A over E, IV and PRB. Now they actually stand for actual against expected, impact value and percentage of runners beaten. 
Now, I'm not going to go into all of that in this video. There's actually a blog post that Matt did on his site uh, middle of last year. So I click on that and you'll see that he explains what IV, A over E and the PRB stand for. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go to that post and read the complete ex explanation about those. Next we have the trainer jockey combo. So they, this is showing races where, where a particular jockey is ridden for the trainer he's riding for today. And it shows those that are in good form. So Aidan Coleman looking particularly good there. And then if you click on the trainer, you'll see the horse that's running. If I close that up. And then if you click on the arrow, you'll see all the list of horses where they've combined in recent times. So last 14 days. We go on to trainer snips, which is trainer snippets. And this actually combines data from the past two years for several other reports. And it helps you gain a better understanding of the way a trainer operates. And I'm not really want to go too much into that, but you can see all the settings across the top are very similar to all the other reports. Next one is HC1 which is trainers with horses having their first run in a handicap. The next one's for first runs for a two-year-old. Given him we're in January, there's no two-year-old races at the moment, but this report would come into its own later in the year. And then you have jockey stats, which are very similar to the trainer stats for jockeys that are right, have rides today. And again, you can click on the jockey's name and it'll pull up a list of their rides for today. Sire snips, again sire snippets, shows a two year record for all sires with progeny that are running today. And again, click on the sire's name to actually see those horses that are running for it today. And then we go report angles. Now this allows you to customize the reports to your own requirements. And once you set up various report angles, then they'll actually appear within the, the race card. So if I just nip back to if I nip back to my race card, I'll click on card. Well, I've got one report angle set up there. So you might have several report angles pop up on there. And this allows you to easily see it within the race cards without having to go into each individual report on a daily basis. And Matt considers this to be one of the most powerful aspects of GG's Gold. So it's certainly worth looking at and setting up your, your report angles. If I just jump back to my reports again. And you see QT angles. Well, that's for the query tool. So I'll cover that in the next section when I go on and talk about the tools. First of all, we have the tracker tool. Click on that one. So this allows you to track specific horses, trainers, jockeys, or sires. And you can enter notes as to why you're tracking them. And you can also specify to receive an email the evening before to alert you when any of your tracking qualifiers are running. So the query tool, I'll come back to that in a minute. Go on to the bet tracker. I've only got any bets tracked at the moment, but when the result comes in for the one that I entered earlier, then that will appear in this section. And this is a very useful tool if you are keeping track of your bets. It enables you to drill down so you can look to see which days you're profitable, which courses, any particular jockeys or trainers where you're doing particularly well back in their horses. Now, I think a useful add-on would be that when you're actually entering your bet, Say, for instance, you had different tipsters or different systems you were following. If you could actually enter an identifier for those, so then you could actually, when you do the reports here, you could actually break it down for each of your systems. As it is, you can actually export your bets and then you could analyse them separately in a spreadsheet. But it'd just be nice to have it all in the one area, I think. Draw analyzer enables you to analyse the draws of particular tracks. One of the races tomorrow is at Newcastle. So if we look at, if we scroll down for Newcastle all weather, you can see there that five furlongs, let's actually change that to five up to six as well. Five and six furlong sprints. The low numbers don't do quite as well as the high numbers. That's with eight to 16 runners. You can change the, change the number of runners there and you can specify it for, at the moment I've got 
2009 up to 2020. So if you wanted to do more recent, say for instance you only wanted to do the last two years, there's less difference between them. Middle draw seems better than the high. Obviously other courses the draw will be more significant. And in the lead up to the turf season starting in March, you could use the analyzer to analyze the course ready for the season. Similar to the draw analyzer, we've got pace analyzer. So this analyzes whether horses that lead, those that are prominent, those at mid division, or those that are held up perform the best. So again, we'll go back and select Newcastle again, as that's tomorrow. So I need to select all weather. And again, I'll probably go five to six furlongs. And those horses that have led are almost twice as good as those that are held up. If you had a one pound stake on every horse that led the race, you'd have returned 134 pounds. Obviously the, the, the issue you don't know is which horse is gonna lead the race. But you can use the pace profile from the race cards to analyze those horses that are most likely to lead. Newcastle, five and six furlongs on the all weather. You'd be looking for horses that like to lead and have shown signs of leading in their previous races. Okay, now I'll just jump back to the the query tool. The query tool is like a, a little systems builder. It's not as elaborate as some other system builders on the market, but it builds in nicely with the race cards. So I'll do a quick example. You can specify date ranges, race details, runner details, and if there's a particular detail you're never going to want to use, then you can actually hide that and it'll go under the hidden section. Let's have a look for the last two years in another race and let's just pick a course. Let's, have, let's pick say Chelmsford and then under runners, actually go for odds rank. So we look at favorites, so we'll go odds rank of one to one. If I generate a report for that. And now if I actually go down, so under the race details, if I select a distance, so if I click on distance and then click generate report, it will break down the, those runners into the different distances. Those over 14 and 16 furlongs, the favourites are done quite well. Now I'm not saying that's going to be a system to, to, uh, to be betting on blindly like that, but that just shows you the way that you can actually specify a few filters and then analyse other filters and see how profitable they, they their returns are. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up then for the tools section. I hope you found that run through useful. If you'd like a more in-depth demonstration of the race cards, reports and tools, Matt did a series of one hour videos where he went through each in more detail. Again, I'll include a link to those videos in the description below. Many of the race card aspects can be accessed for free. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Matt offers a one month trial to Gigi's Gold for just one pound, so I recommend you try it for yourself to see how you get on. After the trial period ends, you'll automatically be converted to the monthly recurring subscription, which is £36 a month, or you can switch to pay quarterly or annually at £360 a year, which gives you 12 months for the price of 10. If you decide not to continue, you can simply cancel your subscription before the end of the month trial. You'll have seen from my walkthrough the abundance of statistical information Gigi's Gold provides. And while it's not recommended you try and use all the aspects, you will want to spend enough time each day using the tools and reports to make the subscription cost worthwhile. In his videos, Matt shows the reports he'd use if he only had 15 minutes a day to analyse the form. But he does say that if you regularly only have a few minutes to use it each day, then Gigi's Gold might not be for you. The more time you have to analyse the data, the more you'll get out of it. OK, if you found this video useful, take a second to hit the subscribe button and ding the bell. That way you'll get notified when I upload future videos. I've been manually proofing the selections of several tipsters since the start of the year, some paid and some free. Next week I'll be reporting on their performance to date, so I'll see you then.